like nothing ever happens. There you go. And first like try. Nothing ever happened. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How are you doing? I'm Bob. This is the other guy. Hey. There he is. Hey, there he is. Hey, hey everybody. Hey, 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 all right. Hey, there it is. Surprise. It's short season, apparently. Woo! You got to look at my hairy legs. You get to see right up there. Yep. Uh, I've there's there's like an epidemic of uh, dudes on podcasts wearing just regular shorts, but <clears throat> cameras just going right up. Yeah, yeah, and they I, look like they're shorter than they are. I like to wear my shorts a little extra long because that's that's the cool thing to do if you grew up in the two thousands. I like to wear skinny jeans, and I went right. to the store the other day to return jeans that weren't skinny enough for me, and uh, they don't sell them anymore. Really, they don't got them there. Wow. Uh, I, I'm, just I'm out of back. fashion. No, they did. Okay. I just want to return it for other right. jeans, and I didn't have them. That's good. You shouldn't <clears> wear <throat> skinny jeans. You need room to breathe down there, boys. I got enough. Okay. Yeah, all right. Whatever you say. Uh, it's, see, I had an athletic fit. Mm -hmm. I had athletic skinny jeans. Isn't athletic just like stretchier? That's what I thought, yeah. but apparently they're a little big. I don't know. Pants don't make any sense to me anymore. <clears throat> These that I'm wearing right now, super skinny. Oh, really? That's a little too much. Yeah. I don't need super skinny. <laughs> no. Anyway, guys, how you doing? We got a lot to talk about we today. We do. Uh, right off the bat, we got uh, Nintendo Switch 2 rumors. Wow. Oh, yeah. They, they, they're serious this time. It yeah. looks like it's for realsies. This time it's for real. And then uh, I want to talk about the uh, potential 3DS emulator yes. on the iPhone. Because I'm excited Saw about that. that. Um. And some other bullshit. A lot of stuff. Um, game publishers are, have basically said that they do not support preservation in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Uh, we were going to... That, that actually broke late last week, like right before we went live. But I feel like it's important enough because we bring it up enough on the show. No, I want to hear all that, the yeah. going-ons with uh, games preservation. Yeah. Uh, Steam changed his refund policy. Not that it matters. PC gaming is dumb. Uh <laughs> Fallout 4 update. Uh, Most importantly, an update on your MSI claw. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about that? Let me put that. Let me add that yeah. in here. Oh, boy. Uh, if we got Xbox news. Uh, it's not looking too good over there for the green guys. They're shutting down completely. Yeah, that's it. No more Xbox. It's it's all PlayStation all the time. Um, But that said, they did have an indie showcase, and they're having another showcase later in June. Uh. All things to look forward to on this episode of Wolf Den Podcast, episode 174. Uh, we got Farmer Gooch with $5 on the YouTube side who says, you can just call me Farmer. Okay. I okay. Screwed up. <laughs> Sorry. Throwing some spare change for Will's laptop fund. Thank you. What I about Bob's laptop fund? <laughs> I got I got a lighting issue now. Oh, I, no. I, 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 I got like, you can't see it now because no. it's a dark screen, but there's uh, the backlight's going on the, on the bottom oh, over here. You might as well just throw the whole thing in the trash. Throw the whole thing out. I think it's because I use it a lot while it's closed. Uh, really? It heats up a lot. Oh, there. I got it. I, I heard what you do is if you close it, you don't do you, do you put it in a stand or yeah okay you gotta make sure it's like this where the vents on top oh it is yeah okay yeah, I, I do that then i don't know what to tell you yeah i mean leave it open but um, yeah I, i'm not gonna do that uh well, we also got some notifications over on twitch because i didn't stream the other day so a lot of people are uh, subbing right now uh neon blue knight thank you for the prime original spiff thanks for the 25 months there is something super wholesome about a we Universal Audio and a Sony monitor all hanging out as a background podcast guest. Is this considered Universal Audio? This is yeah, it's a Universal Audio interface. Got it. I just okay. I I specifically got this interface mm -hmm. because I thought it looked nice with all this other stuff. It does. It does. <laughs> it does go with the decor, as it were. Uh, we also got Willow Davis, uh, George McFarland, Edward Bova, and Riley. Thank you for these subscriptions. I appreciate it. We also got uh, Gutter is a tool uh, for twenty two months. Yeah, man. Yeah. And we got um, Will Wolf, damn oh, it, resubscri resubscribed. Uh, hey, Wolf Bros, Sonic 06 is still available for purchase on the Xbox 360 Marketplace. It's $4.99 with a 3.5 star rating. Wow. Better get it now before the 360 Marketplace closes forever in July. Wait, I Hashtag actually... Hashtag games preservation. I actually want to play that. And it, it's not on Steam. It's not on Steam. It's And it's not backwards compatible on Xbox One or Series X. So... It is oh, it is stuck on the 360. That sucks. Yeah. So like you, you can buy it and play it on your 360, but when your 360 goes, that's it. 
I actually want to play that. Well, I have a physical version in my house. Okay. Somewhere. So if you really. But that's not backwards compatible. No. So you, you have to bust out the, the 360. I have a three an extra 360 that I haven't set up yet. Just a, just a couple spare 360s <laughs> laying around. Exactly. Oh, you don't? <laughs> no. I mean, no. So maybe I'll, I'll set that up and like see if I can get it working. And I'll just let you, let you play it on a stream. Farmers with $5. Sorry for neglecting your laptop fun, Bob. Here you go. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> my laptop appreciates it. All right, let's dive right into the uh, switch to yes tales here. I actually don't know all of the details. The only detail that I know is that it supposedly has magnetic uh, Joy-Con. <laughs> yeah, I mean that seems to be the big one. New details about Switch uh, Nintendo Switch's successor have reportedly surfaced. Long-running Spanish video game website Vandal claims to have received information about the console from sources at peripheral makers. Those dastardly peripheral makers, according to the site. Uh, Switch 2's Joy-Con controllers will attach to the console magnetically. As current Joy-Cons connect to the Switch using a rail system, it's unclear if they'll be forward compatible with the new console. The existing Switch Pro controller will work with the Switch 2, it's claimed. It's worth noting that prior to the Switch OLED's reveal in 2021, Vandal accurately reported on some of the console's features, such as the inclusion of a new stand and an Ethernet port. Uh, VGC reported in February that Nintendo had internally delayed the launch of the next-gen console from this year to early 2025. One publishing source suggested the one publishing source suggested the delay was so that they could prepare a stronger first-party software for the console, while others have claimed the move was made to avoid potential hardware supply issues. Uh, I got an ad for Coca-Cola popping up. Oh, there's Wolverine. I, hey, yeah, Wolverine. I got that too. Right. Uh, VGC also reported last summer that the dev kits for the Switch 2 were in the hands of key partners. Uh, two sources VGC spoke to at the time suggested the console could launch with an LCD screen instead of the more premium OLED in order to bring the costs down, especially considering the increased storage needed for higher fidelity games. Uh, so this is interesting. I have a hot take about this magnetic Joy-Con situation. Okay. Here's my hot take. I think that the magnetic Joy-Con is just a hall sensing it's a Joy-Con with a hole sensing stick in it. Okay. And someone heard magnetic and thought that meant that they attached magnetically. And then th through a game of telephone, we're getting this news. All right. Well, the, <laughs> that's what I think. The original source is a Spanish website. Mm -hmm. So it might've gotten lost in translation. I, well, I mean, the original source before that is probably either Japanese or Chinese. Right. So, so <laughs> literally, so you got a lot of different languages that could right, mix it yeah. up is what, is what I'm saying. Um, Anyway, uh, if it is magnetically attached Joy-Cons, uh, I'd imagine that the Joy-Cons are going to attach in a, in a different way than what they currently do. Mm -hmm. um, magnetically, I'd imagine that there's something else that's going to be holding it together. It's yeah. not just going to be a magnet. There'll be some sort of yeah, other rail some... system or something to snap it in. Yeah, I'd imagine because like, the rail system is what keeps it in place. Yeah. You know, a magnet could easily snap off. And they're pretty good. The, ra the rails are pretty yeah. good great on a switch uh i did notice on my oled that there is a little bit of give There's right a little bit of give on it uh it's not as uh stable as it once was right. but uh it's still uh, it's holding up a lot better than i ever would have expected yeah. uh this rail system to work the only reason i think that they would redesign that is because uh they if they're going to change the shape of the switch at all mm -hmm. uh they need to change the shape of the joy con because that's like 50 percent of the whole device yeah. and uh that's going to affect, even if they make this device a little thicker or, or thinner, mm -hmm. they're going to have to change the rail system right. completely. So that's an opportunity to change the way that it attaches. Right. The Lenovo Legion Go attaches the Joy-Con in a, or the controllers in a different way. Um, they like kind of snap in and like yeah. lock in. Uh, people are reporting those have been breaking. My, mine okay. are fine, but uh, I also never detach them. I have no reason to. So it also says that the Pro Controller will still work. Yeah. So that leads me to believe that the Joy-Cons could potentially still work with the Switch 2, but not connecting it to the system. Like they could work via Bluetooth, you know, one in each hand or even like the sideways configuration or even in the, the Joy-Con sleeve. I'm imagining a Wii to Wii U situation yeah. where all of the uh, Wiimotes still worked and the classic controller and whatever still worked, but then they had other stuff yeah. that, that would work. Uh, I they mean, they had like an updated pro yeah. controller and stuff. It would behoove Nintendo to like keep as much accessory 
compatibility as they can moving on to the next system because what is it 122 million people have a switch yeah they they, they need to make it yeah. as easy as possible to transition to the new switch yeah uh that way people can keep playing their games and the which, same games that they had which they did you know gamecube to wii the wii was backwards compatible wii to wii u was backwards compatible switch was a clean break but that kind of needed to be a clean break uh yeah switch was a clean break i mean they've they've done a lot of clean breaks yeah um they've already said that they want to change the account system so that that'd be an easier transition yeah. because the previously going between systems trying to move your account over sucks yeah wolf then dad in the chat says oh, did God. i hear this on red and stimpy happy happy joy joy con there's a documentary a vip badge <laughs> there's a documentary on the creation of ren and Stimpy. don't tell him no i like, don't no, show I, him that I, like i want to this is actually interesting because like it was all about like making ready they got the entire original like creative team back and they were very open and honest with how the creator john chris lucy was like not a good boss he was like always clashing with nick Lodi, and he was always late with his stuff he was like very like angry and aggressive and chris lucy like was like really open and honest about it and then while they were editing the movie, it came out that Chris Lucy was grooming two underage girls yeah, on his staff. He, he was, so, yeah, he was a fucking like. I want to see that. Just but, like I want to see how filmmakers like handle like such a shocking turn of events. Like but in the middle of editing. Supposedly there was another. There was a co-creator, wasn't there? That people don't talk about. There, there was, was like another guy. There was John Chris Lucy. There was Bob Camp, who like took over after Nickelodeon fired him. I think he did most of the. He stuff. did most of yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and after Nickelodeon fired Chris Lucy, like Bob Camp took over. Yeah. And like it was basically his show until it ended. Right. So Garrison says, Hey Will, what was that you were wearing? What was that you wearing with the Halloween four shirt? Not even close. Hey Will, was that you wearing the Halloween four shirt? Oh. He's referring to a tweet I saw where somebody in a Halloween four shirt was saying that uh at the Batman eighty nine premiere that Batman eighty nine was goofy. <laughs> Oh, did the guy look like you? No. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you for the pride, Garrison. <laughs> yeah. Bob, do you need new glasses? Yes. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, the Switch Red too. and Stimpy. So, uh, all right, so really all we're getting is just how the controllers are going to work and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope that a lot of the peripherals that currently work now will work on the new stuff. If the Pro Controller carries over, that's great. I don't know if there would be a new one. I think the Pro Controller they have is pretty great. They might do it like a 2.0. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the only thing that people really want in a Pro Controller is all sensing sticks. Yeah. I, mean, I, I can't imagine anything uh, different. I, Having other different configurations, maybe. Yeah, I, like, I'd imagine, like, maybe, you know, I mean, I, you can't get much better than this uh, Pro Controller battery life. But, like, yeah, like you said, all sensing controllers, a better rumble system. You know, if, if they're redoing the Joy-Cons, then maybe they are adding, like, a... Uh, 4k rumble instead of hd rumble i don't i don't <laughs> fucking know i'll work at nintendo that's the other thing they're gonna shove in a bunch of stuff that yeah. uh they can put on like a tech sheet that nobody's gonna use like hd rumble and and uh an ir sensor and all that dumb yeah. stuff um there's also people talking about how uh there could be shit going on with the dock and all this stuff, like how that could be used to like upscale mm -hmm. and whatever. Uh, I think that uh, if they have a dock, it'll just be capable of 4K. But in in the out, like like, like I think the how do I put this, the port will be capable of 4K. The dock's gonna be dumb and it's not gonna do any upscale. Like the current, the current switch. Yes, yeah. exactly. I think it's just gonna you know do the same thing the current one does. It just if you put it on uh, the charger, it could have more power do you think because the switch right now does not use um usb-c power delivery it uses some weird cockamamie standard yeah i'm worried you, about that. yeah do you think that nintendo is going to use the power because if they use the power delivery standard mm -hmm. and the, the regular ass usb standard then that means that other any random dock can work with the switch no problem do not you, necessarily because that's a very good question uh power delivery it just refers to charging right uh the way that it displays video mm -hmm. is something called my dp or something it's, okay. it's a video protocol right, right. uh so there is potential for them to use uh usb pd uh and and have a standard usb protocol for charging 
and still maintain a weird standard for video. Yeah. So there are other devices that use the same protocol that the Switch has. It's some like weird like so Samsung phones yeah. or some shit. Uh, so it's not that weird of a protocol that it uses, but it's weird enough where it's not the standard. Right. Uh, so there's my theory is that they will still continue to uh, have a weird video protocol, but they might conform to a better uh, uh, power delivery standard. Right. Because there were issues. They, they need to they need to iron those out. They need yeah. to iron no, out. No, one hundred percent. Yeah, I figure you know using. You know the more universally used USB standards, yeah. which is make their lives easier, people make everybody's gonna, lives easier. People are gonna plug their switch into other stuff, right? You know, and and mm -hmm. you want it to work with the most stuff possible because yeah. people are gonna break their switches and then they're gonna come to you and then yeah. you, what are you gonna do? Not honor the warranty mm -hmm. because they used their iPhone charger? I mean, it was already a miracle that they used USB C on the switch itself. Mm -hmm. Like Nintendo yeah. could have very easily have used a proprietary plug, which they have done in the past. You're right. The, and, the one for the 3DS is really annoying because yeah. it's so close to a mini uh, yeah. USB, but it's just even a like weird. the NES controller, the way it connects to the to the NES. Like at the time, Sega and Atari, and I think some of the other competitors were using a standard nine pin connector that computer mice were using. Mm -hmm. And here comes Nintendo, where they're like, "Now nah, we're gonna make them." Yeah, we're gonna so, be weird about yeah. it. Yeah. And it's not like it's different. It's it's just it's just the the physical port is yeah. different. Like the the amount of wires, I think, yeah. is, is the same. Uh, Willow Davis says we want analog triggers, goofball. Oh, I don't care about analog triggers. <laughs> I mean, it is weird that like Nintendo doesn't have them because mm. like they've been standard for almost twenty years now. So so that's an issue with GameCube games. It's an issue with uh, Smash Brothers a little bit, but. For the most part, I prefer uh, digital triggers because with like shooters and stuff, like I want the fastest reaction possible. But at the same time, like if you're a, if you're a third party publisher and you have a game on PlayStation and Xbox that uses yeah. you know analog triggers, and when you port it over the Switch, now you got to like think about how you're gonna use use it in that version of the game because yeah. it's not a one to one you know parity. That's a good point. So I mean, the best case scenario, it in terms of a controller, I almost threw up all over my computer. <laughs> I would have laughed. The best case scenario is uh, the Xbox and PlayStation Pro controllers, where yeah. you where you have the option to toggle it to be a hair trigger. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I gotta be honest, I've never been in a situation where I'm like, God damn, I wish I had uh, uh flow triggers. flow seven nine seven racing games benefit from analog triggers. So yeah, a hundred percent. That's like that's like the thing. Yeah, I'm not great at racing games. So like when I play Forza, I'm flooring it or I'm not <laughs> or I'm off the trigger completely. You know, yeah, like when I play, I'm like pulsing it. Yeah, well, like I think the analog trigger, like it kind of helps in a way, because like when I first started learning how to drive, my only experience driving was racing games <laughs> where you just hold down the A button and go. So what you're saying is you were great. At yeah, I was driving. fucking awesome at driving. I mean, Forza is cool on the Xbox because you feel it because yeah, it has yeah, the yeah. HD rumble and the triggers mm -hmm. or whatever. But uh, no, when I'm playing a racing game, I'm flooring it or not pressing the trigger. Right. At all. I'm like toggling it. Uh, Bob is getting canceled. Yeah, I'm going to get canceled over uh, my uh, how I don't prefer analog triggers. Yeah. I mean, when they're like, obviously, I prefer analog triggers for like Mario Sunshine because it's a part of the game. It's a, yeah. There's a mechanic in the game that uses analog triggers. Mm -hmm. And when they ported that over to the Switch, uh, not having analog trigger was really annoying. Yeah. Uh, but that's the only time I can think of where I was like, I need an analog trigger right yeah. now. So anyway. Uh, what else about the, uh, the, the potential of a Switch 2? We're going to hear a lot more rumors as it goes on. Yeah. And we're going to continue to cover them on the podcast. This was like a very like one thing like story like the joy cons might be magnetic or they might not be and i feel like we're gonna get a lot more like yeah. one thing stories like next month there'll be headlines all over the world uh switch 2 is gonna have a metal kickstand and we're gonna do like 20 minutes on the metal <laughs> kickstand of the switch 2 well and then the month after that it's gonna be like uh the switch 2 is gonna have 
uh, my, uh, two micro SD card slots, and we're gonna do twenty minutes on two micro SD card slots. You know what we slots. should start doing? We should maybe we'll, we'll on a low week, we will configure what we know about the Switch Two so far, mm -hmm. and we'll put it on a board. Yeah, and we will uh replace the stuff when there's new information. That's a good idea. Like, like, yeah, so we can see how wrong some yeah. of these people have been. We should get, and like we should name names. <laughs> <laughs> like like this like this is Vandal ba Vandal yeah his website Vandal so if they if there are no magnetic yeah attached Joy Cons we could say Vandal was wrong right. about their claims of magnetic <laughs> Joy Con I like that idea that's a good idea like are we gonna get like an actual board I should or? get a whiteboard yeah. right we yeah. should get a whiteboard uh farmer contribute to the whiteboard funds <laughs> don't, don't ask him for me jazim thank you for the subscription okay uh moving on mm -hmm. i need to make a note buy a whiteboard <laughs> uh all right let's talk let's talk very quickly about the uh 3ds emulator that's coming to the uh, Switch. It oh. looks like the iPhone is getting a 3DS emulator in also, the not-too-distant future. I want to thank Thrill House for the 33 months before I forget. He said, my wife said it was her or the wolf then. So happy 33 months, boys. Thank you so much, Thank Thrill you. House. made the right choice. Uh, it looks like the iPhone is getting a 3DS emulator in the not-too-distant future. Uh, a post on Twitter showing 3DS being played on, the Apple, on Apple's popular smartphone, suggesting that an App Store launch could be coming soon. It is reported that a recent iPhone... Uh, will be required to get the most out of the emulator, so I anticipate having to own an iPhone 15 to get games running at full speed. Naturally, you'll lose the uh, auto stereoscopic 3D effect too. It's uh, it's also thought that this will cost four dot four ninety nine uh, when it arrives uh, eventually. So I've been hearing a couple of things about this. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was we we talked about it already on the podcast, but how. Uh, Apparently, Dolphin and also 3DS games. Uh, I didn't know this is also this is a 3DS thing. I heard about this for Dolphin. How Dolphin can't work, or, or GameCube games can't work because there's no just-in-time uh, right. recompiling. Uh, apparently, Citra has the same thing. Okay. Or, or, or I'm sorry, 3DS games have the same thing. Okay. It, can somebody tell me if I'm wrong there? Uh, but here's a case where it's only going to work on the most powerful. Uh, iPhone because they have a different way to recompile it. Right. Uh, or maybe just the person who said that to me on Twitter may, might have just gotten that information wrong. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure if that's the recompiling that they, that they use for Citra or anything. Um, but anyway, regardless, this is only working on the most powerful iPhone because it's it's 3DS. It's going right, to take a lot. Yeah. And I'd imagine the most powerful iPhone is more capable of a lot more than fucking 3DS. Right. Yeah. But uh, I think that is understandable why you would need the most powerful stuff to, to mm -hmm. run this. Uh, the other thing people seemed to be upset about was that this would cost $5. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with paying a little bit for an emulator. $5, I think, is not, not a lot for a, an app that you're going to use like this. Uh, but there's the concern that it will get taken down because it costs money. Right. I don't know how that works. I'd, I'm interested to see what excuse Nintendo will use to take it down yeah i'm assuming they're gonna do their best to put this on the app store without showing any nintendo marketing because that's yeah. how they've gotten stuff in the past using nintendo marketing to market right. their paid app um but pretty much anything that nintendo uh comes at them for or or, or does a cease and desist for will set a precedent for emulators going yes. forward on what's okay and what's not mm -hmm. okay uh so far i think everything's fine so long as they don't uh promote or use nintendo to promote their emulator and as long as they don't actively promote pirating games right right now 3ds stuff is offline mm -hmm. so they're not really competing against uh yeah an active platform yeah like nintendo like stopped supporting the 3ds entirely there is yeah. no other way to play these games so how do you expect people to play games that they legally purchased? Mm -hmm. You know, if they have the means to upload them digitally, how how else can they play them? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that they got Yuzu for was they were updating Yuzu uh, with, uh, they were updating Yuzu to work with games that weren't even out yet. Like, yeah. Tears of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. 
they were also distributing ROMs of Tears of the Kingdom in their Discord and yeah. stuff amongst themselves. Uh, so they got them on that. So uh, these guys have to be pretty on top of things to make sure yeah. that they're not uh, mm -hmm. uh, guilty of all that stuff. Uh, what else? Um, Griffinix says Android has paid emulators as well. Yeah, that's why I'm familiar with paid emulators, and they've been on there for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, DSMU is like $5 or something. That one I've had forever. So, yeah. Uh, I'm ex very excited for this. Another criticism people had was it's the most expensive iPhone. Yeah. It's at a minimum of like, what, $1,000 for, for yeah. an iPhone 15 Pro? Mm -hmm. So the barrier to entry is very high for this. Obviously, do not go out and buy an iPhone 15 <laughs> Pro just to play your 3DS games. Right. That would be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I love my iPhone 15 Pro for a myriad of other reasons. Right. Before it was even capable of emulators. So... Uh, I'm very excited for this. I'm interested because the, so the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max have the A17 Pro chip. Mm -hmm. The baseline iPhone 15 has the A16 chip, which was introduced in the, the previous model, the the iPhone 14 Pro. Mm -hmm. So this um this opens up a lot of questions. So does this mean it's going to work on an iPhone 15? Or just the Pro? No, just worked, the Pro. Supposedly. Just the Pro. Okay. Yeah. So then that means it wouldn't work on the 14 Pro, but it means it could work on the 16 regular because that'll probably share the, share the same chip as the 15 Pro given oh, Apple's yeah. recent history. It'll most likely work with all future iPhones. Yes. Uh, assuming that they don't go backwards. Right. And maybe they make an iPhone mini again. Yeah. But I doubt that. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Um. Yeah, so obviously don't go run out and buy it. Oh, iPads, maybe. It'll probably... Oh, yeah. They, it'll probably work on a myriad of different iPads. Well, I mean, rumors suggest that, like, the next iPads are all going to be M-based chips. Uh-huh. So they have to, like, oh, sure. write it out be, for the new architecture. That might be different architecture. Is similar to enough to iPhone architecture. I would imagine that an M chip uh, would be powerful enough to... Similar and powerful enough to do a uh, translation. Yeah, you know. And, yeah, I mean, and be able to run it. The M chips and the A chips are still similar. Are so similar enough that I'm yeah. sure, like, it could be an easy crossover. Just running iPhone apps on an iPad isn't always a great experience. No. Sometimes it's like small. Yeah. Sometimes they they like crop it. Yeah, because they don't format it for the iPad. Yeah, so they would have to be updated for that. No, the real thing though, is Vision OS. Whoa. They're going to get it working on Oh, and then OS. you get 3D. Yeah. There you go. They also just updated Delta to mm -hmm. work on iPads. Okay. So now you got Delta working on yeah. iPads, which worked great on everything else. It's the same app, just on iPad. Yeah. Uh, and the controller is massive because yeah. it's, it's an iPad controller. So uh, this is awesome. I'm excited for this. Oh, the other reason why I'm excited for this is because I've been trying to work on what I call the 1DS. Right which is just Joy-Con rails on a phone. But uh, I've been having so many issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the first issue I ran into was uh, the Android phone I was using, a Google Pixel 3a. It's old. Yeah. Doesn't run 3DS games good. It'll do DS, but I don't want right. to do 3DS. It, yeah. uh, it, it doesn't play those games that good. Uh, the s second issue I ran into was that Android phones mm -hmm. can't, use two joy cons at once really yeah huh but iphones can oh but there were no emulators on the iphone now, now there are there's emulators on the yeah. iphone so i can just do i can make the iphone the one ds there you go hear that all my friends in the group chat there's something iphone can do that your android phones can't you guys in the group chat are fucking stupid for <laughs> for not now you got no excuse now yeah. what's the excuse yeah what is the excuse now? I don't know. They it's always some dumb thing like, oh, with the lock screen, you could do this, but you can't on the iPhone. I gotta be honest though, I like Android a lot more than iPhone. <laughs> There's so many great little notification, little doodad things that you can like mess around with and get perfectly. Here, here's the here's the thing. I genuinely like honestly, um, this is not a character. This is like genuinely how I feel. I don't care about like, you know platform preference or whatnot play you know play your game if you're a playstation person play your games on playstation if you play games on pc play them on pc whatever makes you happy 
I only care about iPhone versus Android because it personally affects me because <laughs> now I have to use another messaging app mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of the default one, which works perfectly fine. <laughs> you know, iPhone is just so great to use with a MacBook. Oh, a hundred percent. It's just so, yes. the parody is so amazing. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. Windows sucks. Yes. And, and I actually, I really do like the Android platform. It just does not have the same parity that that it doesn't others, and that like Apple has. You know, and the fact that like Google will come out with something, hype it up, and then kill it like two years later, yeah. pretend it never existed, and introduce the same thing but on a worse version. You I know? really do like Google services, and then they will just yeah, they will just take you, they'll get you used to it and then remove it completely. Yeah, and then, and then you won't be able to use it anymore. No. Oh. I'm going to follow Bob's advice and use the Steam Deck dock to play my games on my television screen and now with Delta. Oh, with your phone. Yeah. 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 No, that makes sense. Yeah, no, it works great. Uh, all right. Let's do this now. Bing. Backlog! 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 Welcome to the Backlog, everybody. Backlog show where we go into our backlog and play a game from a backlog. Well, we don't play it, we talk about it. Every game we've ever bought throughout our entire lives has gone into an Excel spreadsheet. And today, we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. Oh, boy. Oh, the last couple have been great been, games that yeah. we've all play, that yes, we played. Yes, yes. This one's 743. 743, and it is Call of Duty Black Ops for the Xbox 360. This is the first one. The first Black Ops. First Black Ops. Yes. All right, this was good. This I was, liked, yeah, this I liked was the actually Black pretty Ops. good. Uh, this was still in the era where Call of Duty like ha didn't outstay its welcome just yet. And No, the, this was peak Call of Duty. Yeah, and it was interesting because like the year before was Modern Warfare 2, probably the best game in the entire series. Yes, that was my favorite Call of Duty yeah. for sure. And this year, uh, that was an Infinity Ward game, the original Call of Duty developers. And then the year after was a Treyarch year. Treyarch and, year. Yeah. And like, you know, people didn't hate the Treyarch games, um, but they didn't hold a candle to what Infinity Ward was doing with Call of Duty. But this was the year they like stepped up. They put on their big boy pants. They're like, all right, we're going to make a fucking Call of Duty game to remember. And I think they came pretty close. It's still... I think it like set a weird precedent with like Call of Duty games going forward because like the Modern Warfare games were still like pretty goofy. Yeah. Uh, and this one, like, I think started leaning more into like, we're a serious, we're a serious uh, story, even though yeah. it is very much not a serious they story. They tried to tell like an artsy story. Yeah. And it, it, all Call of Duty stories are bad. I don't yes. care how much you like Ghost and Price and whatever. Yeah. They're they're not good stories. Right. Uh, there's cool moments yeah. in the game. 100%. But yeah. Every Call of Duty game I've played, I get to one of those moments and they're talking and doing their whole dialogue. And I'm like, I have no idea <laughs> who you are or what the fuck you're talking well, about. Well, I think, you know, at least in the, in the games before this, like the story was always told in a way where it was like simple enough where you got the basics and you can move forward. Yeah. Bad guy. Good guy. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. like, they'll I like pepper in like a conspiracy theory, but it wasn't like essential. This game, like they really focused on the story. They really tried to tell the story of uh, your player character, Alex Mason, uh, who was kidnapped and basically became a Manchurian candidate. And you're trying to like piece together your memories um, and your, uh, and you have this uh, Gary Oldman is in the game. He plays uh, Victor Reznov, your partner uh, who follows you through the game or does he follow you through the game? Ooh. <laughs> uh, they really upped the, the like I'm serious. It was Gary Oldman, uh, and he did. They did up a lot of like the Hollywood talent in this. Ed Harris is in the game. Um, also, because their previous games sold so well yeah, that they they were afford able it. to be like, hey, we have all this money. This is how popular these games yeah. are. Uh, your player character again, Alex Mason, is voiced by Sam Worthington. This is like back when avatar first came out and he was actually in movies uh it's unfortunate because he's australian and sometimes his australian accent comes through <laughs> um and ice cubes in the game i don't because why, that at all. why not uh, so, so i i was huge on modern warfare 2 i yeah. love that game i played the multiplayer a lot and then mm -hmm. this came out and i liked it and i played a lot of this too 
but I didn't like it as much as Modern Warfare 2. I think I just didn't like the, uh, it was 80s, right? Uh, it was the 60s. 60s. It, was, it was trying to be a Cold War game. I didn't like the 60s era and the guns that you used in it. Yeah. I, I like the modern weapons better. It, it's also too, like, I don't know if there's ever really been a video game that does like the Vietnam era well. Because every, every time like they do like a Vietnam era war game, it's very like exploitative in a way. Like the, the Vietnam war, like that era was like very... You know, ask your dad. It was very <laughs> controversial. It was very scary. It was the first time like people questioned the purpose of war and like, you know, good guys and bad guys. Why are we there? Why are we yeah. fighting? And with video games, especially like war video games set during the Vietnam era, it has a habit of distilling everything back down to the black and white good guy and bad guy routine. And, you know, this game tried to be like a little bit more serious it tried to play more with like the ambiguity of war and the horrors of war but it still uh, defaults back to like the call of duty tropes and the call of du duty silliness yeah that works very well but when you try to like also take it seriously with like all, all the the vietnam era stuff it kind it definitely creates like a disconnect so this was back when i played uh single player campaigns for call of duty games. yeah but I also spent a long time in the multiplayer. This was, I remember this being part of the argument for uh, games being $60. Like this was felt like some of the best value at the time for oh, a $60 yeah. game because it had uh, a great single player. It had a great multiplayer with a lot of different game modes and stuff and everybody was on it. Yeah. It had uh, the zombies had zo mode, Yeah. And it had all of Zork. Yes. In it? Yeah. The 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 friggin' text based yeah. old game Zork the and whole had, game was it somehow had an playable. Extra in hidden uh twin stick shooter in it. If you knew how to access that. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah, no, the the game definitely had like a lot of value. Like this I, I, I didn't really play the zombies mode that much, but I, I but played it a couple of times. That was extremely popular. Yeah, I played it a couple of times. That was fun because it was I thought it was gonna be like a standard like horde mode, mm -hmm. but it's really a little bit more than that. You have to like you know fortify your base you have to like fall back and like this guy who's keep playing expanding. has terrible aim <laughs> yeah i mean like it's easy to aim and especially if you're playing we played on 360 it was easy to aim in that game auto aiming it's, was very yeah, it generous snap it should snap yeah. to the bad guys um yeah a, a lot of the, the people still play the zombies mode. the yeah. zombies in the newest call of duty yeah, that yeah. people like i think the zombies mode is how people like level up weapons to play in like warzone makes sense stuff. This was not the first Call of Duty game to have zombies. That was actually the previous Treyarch game, World's at War, which I think, this is a direct sequel to. I think this popularized it. This, this took it to the next level. Yeah. This is what made it like the mode for Call of Duty. And the, the, the characters were all U.S. presidents, right? There was a mode where you uh, the characters were, it was JFK, uh, Robert McNamara, his Secretary of State, uh, Fidel Castro, Yes. And uh, Richard Nixon. <laughs> that was the zombies mode, wasn't it? Yes. Well, yeah. those were characters you could play in the zombies mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This game was very bizarre because, like, it implied that your ca your player character killed Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, very strongly into that, like, you know, you were you were actually the one who killed Kennedy. You don't play the the Dallas scene. You should though. You should. That you should. Yeah, that would have been funny. That would have been. That would have made the game a lot better. Yeah. Uh. I remember there was one part in the game uh, where the game broke on me. You were like in Vietnam and like they had to shoot these barrels. That it was, wasn't yeah, clear that you had that to shoot was, the like, barrels. For a lot of people, there was a part yeah. where like, no, you didn't shoot the barrels. You had to push the barrels down the hill. Oh, you had to kick them. And there was, there's no in-game prompt to tell you yeah. to do that other than somebody saying, hey, you should kick the barrels. Like that was it. That was all you were given. Yeah. So a lot of people got stuck on that. Yeah. yeah but you're sitting there at, and they they endlessly send enemies at you. And yeah. in order for you to trigger them to stop sending the enemies, is you're supposed to kick the barrel. But you don't know that because the whole game leading up to that point, you kill as many enemies as you well, can. Well, it's interesting because there's a... There actually, at the time, there was a really popular video making the rounds. Of somebody played the entire first level of the game, which is the Bay of Pigs invasion, which didn't go well for the U.S. <laughs> Ask your history teacher or your dad. Um, yes, you did. <laughs> they played that level... Firing only two shots. 
in the throughout the entire level because there were story specific moments where you had to fire a gun. Mm -hmm. The rest of the of the mission, all the player did was move forward to the right checkpoints because the game didn't necessarily care what you were doing as long as you were yeah. progressing forward because it wasn't really about like a robust player experience. It was just about funneling you through a tunnel. And then you get to the Vietnam section that we were talking about. And now all of a sudden, like you have to actually play the game. Yeah. I think this happens a lot with the first level of shooters is it's usually a cinematic experience. Yeah. It's usually uh, there's, there's a, just a lot of set pieces happening around you. Whereas yeah. in the rest of the game, there are triggers to trigger events. That well, you also, it's like, you know, Call of Duty games in particular, but like bad Call of Duty copy, copies especially were always criticized for specifically that, for funneling you through a tunnel yeah. to get from point A to point B, regardless of what you're actually doing in the game. Because that's like, you know, once you figure that out, like the game's easy. There's no like real challenge there. And it, it like brings game design back a few steps rather than like actively trying to challenge the player. You're just saying like, go here, now go here, now go here. Oh, you beat the game. Yeah. Good for you. Here's a here's a cookie. Uh, I still continue to play Call of Duty games after this. This was definitely like the start of the decline for me. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until, was it, was it Black Ops? There was a later Black Ops game where I said, fuck this, I'm never playing Call of Duty again. <laughs> and it was, uh, it, was, was two, it? It, it was two or three. Which one was the future? So Black Ops 2 was both the past and the future, and the Black Ops 3 was just the future. I, it must have been three then. Yeah. I, yeah didn't, I didn't play past Black Ops 2. So Black Ops 3, mm -hmm. uh, I was playing the single player, and like your character has these like weird memory glitches, and they're like jumping through time, yeah. but it's only the future but right. he's jumping through like a, it, and it's it makes little sense what's happening and he's constantly jumping around and he jumped around and the uh network disconnected and i was like <laughs> i'm playing the single player right so i stopped playing yeah played it again. yeah the, the black ops series like that's their whole thing like you you know you can't trust your character what's real and what's fake you know because they were trying to play off of like Spec know, Ops the line. <laughs> well, no, well, I'll, I'll get to Spec Ops in a minute, but like they were playing off like, you know, the paranoid 60s spy thrillers are like, oh, are you secretly a Russian agent? You know, Manchurian candidate shit. But again, it's like, it's Call of Duty. Like you're, you're, you're a dumb game. You know, don't try to be anything yeah. more than you are. Um, but yeah, Spec Ops the line. It's interesting how we talked about that last week and how like that game, like really like, try to push forward the genre of the modern military shooter and make you think about like, you know, what are you doing? Are you really the hero? Like, what is the point of all this? And then, you know, now we're talking about it's exact opposite yeah. and not just it's exact opposite, but it's exact opposite. Who's trying to be trying to show like, Hey, we're an adult too. You know, we can, <laughs> we can do serious. So I said that I never played Call of Duty again. I mean the single player games. I I dived into the multiplayer a couple times. Uh, Warzone, I've been on. Every, I, I've been playing a lot of right. Warzone. Uh, but before that, uh, it's all the battle royales. Black Ops Four, I think, was only multiplayer. Only multiplayer. And they had a battle royale mode. Right. Uh, that was Warzone, right? No, it was called something else. Um, it's called Blackout mode. Okay. Uh, and that was good, and I played that a little bit. Okay. Uh, but then I kind of stopped until warzone came out right and then warzone 2 i dropped off and then warzone 3 i played for a while and i haven't played in like a month yeah i mean i like i dabbled here and there i played the modern warfare remake because i was curious about it but it was basically the same game i played years ago and then i played uh black ops cold war which i only played because you left it in the series x when you gave it to me oh yeah so i like, did play that multiplayer yeah I'm like i might bit. as well play it. and it's like black ops cold war did like one really cool level and then the rest was like more or less like a beat for beat remake of black ops one even down to like a gratuitous president cameo so it's like it's so weird that like this game series like has not changed much so i really liked modern warfare one and two and three was okay mm -hmm. uh you know the originals and I didn't want to play them again when they remade them. Right. Uh, so I, I started looking up videos of like the cinematics and stuff because I wanted to like see 
you know, like how much better it's gotten and whatever. Yeah. It's completely different. They changed like a lot of what the story was. And yeah. also the story still doesn't make any goddamn right, sense yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, the original Black Ops. Is it worth playing now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like that's a Call of Duty has become like Madden. It's like, why yeah. bother playing any any of the past ones? Just play the new one. Yeah. It's the same thing. Just like, you know, it's literally the same thing with a roster update. I wouldn't recommend playing uh, the latest Modern Warfare because uh, that mul that single player I heard is really half-assed. It's like yeah. barely a single player. Yeah. Uh, maybe the last one. Maybe Modern yeah. Warfare 2. Play that one. I mean, if you're curious, play it. If you played it in the past and you liked it, you might get a kick out of playing it again. Um, I just don't know. Like, if you've never played this before, I don't know if it has any value to you especially if you played call of duty games since then yeah if you played black ops cold war you basically played this game in the 80s instead of the 60s uh edward bova says medal of honor has always been better because it had it was more historically accurate and educational the original medal of honor we were big medal of honor fans originally because we were gamecube boys right well i mean it's it's funny because medal of honor an EA series was, you know, partially created by, uh, what's their names? I know their names. Uh, Jason West and Vince Zampella. And then they left to form Infinity Ward to create Call of Duty. And then Activision fired them, uh, for whole reasons that were kind of scummy. And so they went to create Respawn, which is now owned by EA. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, their games, you know, Medal of the first few Medal of Honors up to Allied Assault, uh, they're the first four or five Call of Duty games, and then Titanfall 2 and Jedi uh Fallen Order, those are all great fucking games. Yeah. And the Call of Duty games haven't been as great. So I don't know. What's the secret formula that's missing? Also, they tried to redo Medal of Honor in modern times, and that was terrible. That, that was, was terrible. really bad. I can't wait till we talk about that. <laughs> uh so I don't know. Don't play this game. Play, play one of the newer ones or or uh, play with it. Whichever Call of Duty you feel like. Playing. Yeah, just just what you do is you go. They're you, all the same. You print out like box art of all the Call of Duty games. You, you put it on a wall and throw a fucking dart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you'll hit one that is okay. Yeah. Thanks for watching the backlog. We'll see you all later. Come to a podcast. Bye. Bye. Did you get a chance to play Spec Ops The Line? I no, you... I doubt I got it on my Steam Deck. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was didn't, I didn't to, load it. Yet. Like hear your thoughts if you followed up on it. Not yet. Yeah. Um All right. Now oh, talk about your MSI claw. Oh. oh. Oh, I got I got By something. the way, I gotta borrow it. You don't get to have it anymore. Okay. <laughs> I got I got I got something to say about about this this guy right here. Tell me it works. It works. It boots up. Okay, and it that's works. It's not good. Here, here's the context though okay i didn't play this thing for like a week okay i didn't touch it i didn't okay. do anything with it i had time i had time to like sit around and play like play games so i'm like all right i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna relax i'm gonna play a game on my your computer needs to restart to complete no no wait hold on not now i have i have a point to prove <laughs> okay bob Yes. Could you please, oh, no. using the left analog stick, select Hellblade? Did the left stick die? The left stick! No, wait, hold on. <laughs> it didn't die. Is it a mouse? Can you, No. So are you able to select Hellblade? Not with the, with left, the left stick. stick, no. Please give it back to me. Okay. Please give what it back to me. What are you going to do? I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm dealing with now. Well, am I going to have to RMA request this thing? Maybe. All right. You are now on the desktop. Okay. You see the mouse cursor? Is it a mouse? Move a it. Mouse. Move it with. It's a mouse. Well, it's a mouse because I put it in desktop mode. If you put it in gamepad mode, the left stick doesn't work. Okay. That's, it just doesn't work. That's really dumb. No, it's in controller mode. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, no, it's it. You're you're right. You're right. Yeah, thank you. Wait, I'm using it. Well, I don't know if I'm using it. Are you? It it, it might just be the MSI software, because I've like 
re-downloaded drivers. I've downloaded and re-downloaded games. I went to the Epic Store and downloaded Fortnite to see if it works in there. Doesn't work at really? all. Really? Yes. I just it just worked for me in the uh, sidebar menu thing. As in uh, desktop mode. Yes. Yes. If I put it in gamepad no, mode. No, 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 no. It's in gamepad mode. It's in game. It's, in game, it's, it's right, currently now, gamepad mode. I, I, I've opened up the gamepad tester, and we're gonna see. It's, it's so right now Xbox 360 controller. Fuck, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it think, Fuck, it think doesn't work. Yeah, and that's what I thought. Thank you very much. <laughs> All the other buttons work. I booted up Arkham City, and I can get Batman to do everything except walk. <laughs> that's that's very stupid. Yeah, it, it's it's infuriating. I spent God knows how long. I just wanted. I was in bed. I just wanted to play a <laughs> fucking video game before I went to sleep, and I couldn't do that because I spent an hour trying to figure out why Batman couldn't walk. <laughs> you know, you know, I, you know where where I don't have this problem on your Switch on my consoles, any <laughs> of them. Greg Miller was right. PC gaming is dumb. Consoles for life. It's very cool. It, it has a, a it is cool, actually very cool. cool. It does. Up. It never overheated. Yeah. Uh, good news. There are driver updates. Oh, great. Uh, installed. Oh, installed. <laughs> Those are okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, you gotta see if there's a controller driver that you can, I like, look force. I, I I couldn't find I did find a reddit thread with other people having the same issue but it didn't give me an answer that's another issue with this thing is that nobody has one so so you, <laughs> so like finding other uh like you know people with similar issues and their fixes you're not yeah. gonna be able to find that I don't see like a controller driver thing yeah you got your real io drive yeah no <laughs> this fucking sucks. <laughs> like sucks. Oh my god. And like I was I genuinely was not hating the thing. I thought I was like, <laughs> okay, like it's a little jank, but I can make this work. Now apparently I can't make it work. <laughs> Cause it doesn't work. Jeez. Uh M MSI Law. Driver. Mecha Dragon says I should just get a laptop at this point. Fun fact, Arkham City does work on my MacBook. So oh my I could God. pick it up and play it on here. Drivers and downloads. Driver. Touchpad. There's a touchpad. Isn't the audio. screen just the touchpad? <laughs> yeah. Graphics chipset. No controller drivers or anything. I mean, why would there be? It's coming up as an Xbox 360. Yeah. Okay. Got one more trick up. Okay. Uh, device manager. We go into device manager. Okay. And then we Here we go. undo it and redo it. <laughs> Xbox 360 peripherals. Here we go. Xbox 360 controller for Windows. Uh, update driver. Do that first. It's automatically for the drive. Best drivers are already installed. Okay, thank you very much. Disabled device. This might fuck everything up. It, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. I have disabled. I think I disabled. Uh, disabled device. Will cause it to stop functioning. Yes. Okay. We have disabled it. Now I am re-enabling. Close. You must restart your computer. Okay. I'm going to restart. All right. Here we'll we find out. Yes, we will. I should have disabled it, restarted it, and then enabled it. Eh. So we're in gamepad mode now. So when it turns on. It should work. It should. Well. It should. Previously, it would have worked. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, so luckily, this thing also boots up very fast. It does. Uh, Bob, like screw the burning test. Give that man a Steam. Yeah, you can have a Steam Deck. The only. The, the only. <laughs> Issue with that Steam Deck is when you're not playing it, it needs to stay on on Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we're almost. All right. 
Oh, Dark Soul Music. Sup, Wolf Bros. Yo, you got in. You, you hit right in the middle of something, boy. Let me tell you. Doesn't work. That's not okay. <laughs> Doesn't work at all. All right. Where's your trash can? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Uh, go out good. I will. Uh, I was going to take this from you because I have to do input lag tests. Luckily, uh, the one that I am going to do does not require the thumbstick. Okay. Some require the thumbstick. Okay. <laughs> uh so well i mean look the right thumbstick is fine <laughs> i i understand <laughs> all right well uh, i'll fuck with this later i guess all right i could also uh i mean it's it hasn't been a month yet right no turn it. not even <laughs> thing really does suck this yeah. is the worst one this is by far the worst one you know I unless think you include like the i and neo ones yeah, that was a pretty bad. I know, but like I, I knew going in like this was like fourth place of like the top, you know, ones. I understood, but that. it shouldn't be that exactly. Bad. Yeah, exactly. Like, like it just might have a quirk here or there, but yeah, like, like that's not a quirk. Like that's slow broken. down or like you know trying to like configure stuff, like whatever. It's annoying, but I'll deal with it. Yeah. Not functioning, like I can't deal with. Also, part of why it's the worst one is that it is more expensive than the other ones. Right. Uh, it's not that it actually functions worse than the other ones. Yeah. Uh, it just is more expensive and a little not as good. Right. But in this case, it just fuck it. Now, now and that the camera's on, wait, while, while the camera's on me, uh, let's uh, show them how it doesn't turn on now yeah all of a sudden. oh there you go oh it was off forget it forgot the whole thing <laughs> but and again like on the steam deck i was playing it and something happened yeah. so i probably hit some combination of buttons that like shorted it or whatnot whatever you know also i had opened that thing yeah up and you had modded it, it so yeah. whatever i didn't touch that thing for like a week and all of a sudden the right the left analog sticks like you know what will we're not going to work. Oh, it's so weird is that it works. It just yes. doesn't work as a gamepad. Yes. You yeah. know, the thing I want to use it as. <laughs> Let me just, just to give people. Yeah. Look, we got a in gamepad mode. Doesn't work, but the D-pad works. Very dumb. Yeah. Very stupid. All right. Well, uh, I'll take a look at it and see what I can do. <laughs> I got to do the input lag test anyway. Uh, all right. Next news. Let's plow through the rest of this. Okay. We're late already. All right. Uh, game publishers won't support libraries reserving games. Um, uh, I'll the game de developer article is the main article, okay. and then there's a quote from the other article I put in that I want to pull. Okay. Uh, when we're, uh, when we're done. Uh, so we'll do the game developer article first. Original story. The Entertainment Software Association continues to not have a hand in any efforts towards games preservation. The new statement from the organization came in a hearing held by the United States Library of Congress Copyright Office to evaluate a proposed copyright exemption for remote access to archive games uh, for video game researchers. This exemption was proposed by the Software Preservation Network in 2023. During the hearing, Lawyer Stephen England was asked about the possibility of allowing libraries to preserve legacy games. In response, he, uh, he said there is currently no combination of limitations ESA members would support to provide remote access. In 2023, the Video Game History Foundation evaluated, uh, revealed 87% of games released pre-2010 were currently not preserved in any capacity. Attempts previously made by the Library of Congress were halted by the ESA, which said it relied on publishers to take care of those efforts themselves. During the call, multiple solutions to address the ESA's concerns over remote academic access to older games were proposed, but all were shot down by England. He, uh, he was not satisfied with either proposals... He was not satisfied with either proposals to restrict access to those with academic credentials, implying many institutions would set up a simple rubber stamping checks to allow wide access, and derided the idea that limiting the exemption to collections with physical offices would be a satisfactory requirement. On the latter topic, he said that any online-based library could set up a physical office to meet that standard and allow for the creation of what is effectively a free-to-play arcade hosting a huge library of classic game titles. 
to him, the worst thing a nonprofit organization or anywhere with an online archive would be to put a preserved game with few restrictions online. That kind of remote access would be insufficient progress when it comes to preservation. AACS attorney Mike Ayers uh, spoke up in support of the ESA's arguments. In his eyes, there should be more substance in combating the already restrictive preservation rules. Uh, anybody can have a mailing address at Ayers. Uh, when it comes to just checking boxes as opposed to having anything verified, I would have concerns. It's not clear physical premises would actually be effective. During the hearing, other speakers were adamant that something needs to be done about games preservation and that both England and Ayers were missing the point. Video Game History Foundation Library Director Phil Salvador argued most libraries lack the manpower, expertise, or interest to make meaningful game collections, either physical or digital. Institutions making the active effort to do this are in the single digit numbers, he speculated. Only specialized institutions and collections could really make use of the exemption for remote digital access. Technology lawyer Kendra Albert argued that the ESA has been unwilling to meet researchers and preservation is halfway on these efforts. Any changes made to any changes made or proposed, they said, will never be enough for the rights holders of these games. Likewise, they called it upsetting to say scholars' efforts were undermined by the idea of people caring about these games. In Albert's eyes, that remark underlines how deeply out of touch both England and Ayers are about games as a medium. Harming scholarship and teaching because there might be an interest in recreational play doesn't feel fair to them, which put a lot of effort into making these, work avail making these works available. The hearing was live streamed by the Copyright Office and was archived by the Australian Twitch streamer uh, Scott Percival. It will be made available on the U.S. copyright websites in a few weeks' time. So, basically... There was a proposal put into place that... Uh, there were multiple proposals put into place. And the ESA, which is the lobbying group for the for yeah. all games, mm -hmm. has been pushing against it. They, they, they specifically said there is no common... Uh, what was the exact quote? Because uh, it's like really fucking... There's no combination of limitations ESA members would support to provide remote access. Basically... Anything and everything that they propose, the ESA said no to. Every single thing. No matter they, what they restrictions said, they put in place. They said they would allow something about physical libraries. Even but, that, but, like, they were not... Yeah, they, they, they're, that seemed like they were not truthful about that. Like, yeah, like, yeah, because here's, here's, the, here's the quote I wanted to pull from the other article. Because um, that proposal, according to England doesn't prevent users from lying or providing a, or libraries providing a simple checkbox where users could confirm they have a purpose of scholarship or research. So basically, he's afraid that people are going to libraries for fun and not so, to learn. So like that's the dumbest well, fucking the, thing. One of the proposals was for uh academics to have access to the stuff right and he's saying that like well people could just lie and say they're going for academic reasons but right. really they're just going to play a video game having fun playing video games what a concept they're gonna push back as much as humanly possible yeah and uh that's why our government to step in and put regulations in place for archival purposes yeah you know uh uh there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be able to uh, have physical libraries that have games. Uh, that that's, yeah. that should be uh, supported by these big game companies. They should absolutely. Just, they should even want if that. it's old stuff. Like it yeah. doesn't have to be the Especially latest. Especially if stuff. it's old stuff. Nintendo yeah. is not making a dime right now on Eternal Darkness or Metroid Prime yeah. Two or like a whole list of other GameCube games. If my library wants to have it there and I want to take it out of the library because I haven't owned a GameCube, I should be allowed to do that. But I'm not allowed to do that because the ESA says I'm not allowed to do that. Yeah, that's very stupid. It's because they think I'm going to 
take the game out and play it for fun, which is somehow a crime. <laughs> like, what do you think people do at library? Not everybody who goes to the library is going there for academic reasons. People take out books to read recreationally. People take out movies to watch recreationally. Well, every- My local library has video games that you can take out and play recreationally. But everybody knows that libraries are ruining the the entertainment business for movies and CDs and stuff. Clearly, <laughs> clearly they're doing that. Real every every director out there hates libraries. Well, actually, it's wokeness that's killing the entertainment industry. You know that, right? It's all the woke. Oh no, specifically the video game industry. Yeah. It's wokeness. Oh yes. Yeah. Making all of our women in games ugly. Yeah. <laughs> putting stellar putting stellar blade in a less revealing outfit yeah yeah making them ugly <laughs> uh, uh this is just I, I i'm just baffled by like 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 uh, it, it's it's i understand their concern with remote access because there's potential to just have games free on a platform but that hasn't been a problem with movies it has not I haven't been a, heard a single complaint about that. It's, it has not been a problem with movies. It has not been a problem with books. Libraries have been around since books were created. And, you know, people still buy books. Books yeah. are still readily available. You know, it, it, it's just... There, I, there's, a, there, there, there's, there's a general consensus that books make you smart. Yes. So having a book for free in a library is smart. Well, there's a lot but of... But video be- games make you dumb. Right. So having those available... Uh, is bad of course yeah. yes it's it's just it's unbelievable how like short-sighted and like out of touch they are like i've never seen anything like it's, this they're trying to i know what get they're as trying much money as possible do. and they're trying to i know what they're trying to do but like they have to know they look bad doing this well they're getting away with it is I, the yeah they're getting they're away get, with it there's nobody Especially here in America, there's nobody being like, hey, you have so much more control than any other uh, company in in entertainment media. Yeah. And I think that's the problem. Because, you know, as much as we love the Video Game History Foundation, they're they're just, you know, a group of dudes. That's it. Yeah, like, I, but I don't... What's the solution? I, I'm, I've been thinking about this for, for a long time. Like, yeah. like, what do we do? There's nothing we could do. There re- like, there really isn't. Like, somebody has to step forward. And, like, one of these big companies has to step forward and say, this is our answer to this. The closest thing we have right now is GOG. Like, that's it. The closest thing we have is Apple allowing <laughs> emulators on a platform. That's true, too. That was yeah. the biggest thing to happen in years. Yeah. But in terms Steam of. Steam has been on our side for a long time, but then with Dolphin, they betrayed us. Right. So. But it's not just like game emulation, it's like keeping games available, like yeah. easily accessible. Archive.org is great. And I think yeah. that uh, uh, the Video Game History Foundation, I think, might work with them. In they some do. Capacity. But like. You know, that's still... But that's what they're saying when they're saying remote access. Like, ESA is actively trying to fight against archive.org. Right, and they have fought against archive.org in the past. Because that still, you know, falls under the purview of we could, you know, hit you with a DMCA. Yeah. So, there has to be protections in place for that. Yeah. It's unfortunate that everybody that has any sort of power to make any rules in this country is 90 years old. Right. And they don't know what a computer is. Yeah. So only gets worse from here it does anyway uh speaking of our our good ally in the fight steam changing their refund policy yeah. <laughs> eight years ago Valve began uh offering no questions asked refunds for games you buy on steam as long as you ask for that refund within 14 days of purchase and you haven't played for more than two hours of uh of the game but when Valve started letting you play games ahead of their release uh, dates with early access and advanced access programs, it introduced a loophole. People could play for many, many hours ahead of the launch and still request a refund after. Today, uh, Valve closed that loophole. Your advanced access and early access playtime now counts against the two-hour refund limit. Here's what Valve's refund policy uh, says as of now. Um when you purchase a title on Steam prior to the release date, the two-hour playtime limit for refunds will apply, uh, except for beta testing, 
uh, but the 14 day period for refunds will not start until the release date. For example, if you purchase a game in its early access or advanced access, any playtime will count against the two hour refund limit. If you pre-purchase a title, which is not playable prior to the release date, you can still request a refund at any time prior to the release of that game. Uh, and the standard 14 day, two hour refund period will apply starting on the game's release date. I have to be honest, uh, that seems reasonable. I didn't yeah. know that that was a loophole. Yeah, I mean, I have a huge issue with games that are in early access for a really long time. Yeah. I don't mind when a game goes into early access for like a week, closes, and then comes back. Right. Uh, multiverses took that to a little bit of an extreme when it was out for like a long time and then went away and then right. came back. Um, I just think this whole early access thing is stupid. Everybody's they're 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 abusing the early access system. A lot of people that's a lot a, of companies. that's a problem. Like a lot of companies abuse yeah. the early act. It was supposed to be, you know, we put the game out as soon as we can with the un it's it's basically what Cyberpunk should have done. Like get the game out as like early as we can with the understanding that it's not technically finished. Things might be broken, but we give it to you at a lower price because we're still working on it. Yeah. And when it's done and it's out of early access, you get the you get the full game. You paid what you paid for, and anyone new coming in now has to pay full price. I just hate that idea because it ruins the launch. It you're launching a shitty product. I'm gonna judge it on when right. it's the first thing that I see. Right. And if it sucks, there's a low chance I'm coming back later. Well, the problem is a lot of like charlatans would come in, release like, you know, a unity asset flip in early access and say, no, that's it. That's the game. You paid for it. That's it. And then they just don't update. Yeah. And they just ghost you and they put another game up. So it's. I hate the whole early access thing. I don't think it's that unreasonable to have a two hour uh, return limit on an early access game. No, yeah. I mean, ha- removing that two hour limit, the loophole that was previously in place, uh, that could be a deterrent for even releasing a game in early access. Yeah. So and I don't, now I don't know where I stand. Cause like, <laughs> like, if you could just return the game at any point while it's in early access, there's a, there's a, incentive for developers to get it out of early access as right. quickly as possible. So maybe, so I don't know. Maybe yeah. that was the way to go with early access. But again, I just hate the whole early access thing in general. I think right. there's very few uh, games that would benefit from early access and situations where they utilize early access in like a way that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the f- best course of action for like what early... I know there are games that like have used the early access mentality well, like the original Ark Survival Evolved, uh, Black Mesa was in early access for like, I think 10 years. Um, and like it was good, it was playable, but like they kept tweaking it and updating yeah. it as best they could. Um, but yeah, just too many people abuse the system. Yeah, I, I, and I don't, I don't like that. So I don't, again, I don't know what, uh, the, I don't think this is like the end all be all. I don't think this is anything to get like too outraged about. No, it's something that honestly should have been done a while ago. Uh, all right. Fallout Four. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, players who previously redeemed the PlayStation Four version of Fallout Four on PS Plus will have to wait a little longer for its uh free next gen update. Says Bethesda. The free update was released uh and allows players of the PS Four and Xbox One versions of the game to upgrade to the PS Five and Xbox Series X and S versions. Let's, let's uh, read the tweet. All right. The Fallout 4 next-gen update brings with it a new quality and performance mode, widescreen support, and three free club creation content packs for all players. Wow. We've seen some confusion regarding the free Fallout 4 next-gen update on PlayStation Plus Extra members. The Fallout 4 next-gen update will be available to PlayStation Plus Extra members through the PlayStation Game Catalog. I have to click in to read more. I didn't realize. Your patience is appreciated while the teams work on this. And it's um, it should be it wasn't said in the tweet, but this also applies because apparently it was a PS Plus basic game. Thanks for letting us know that some PS Plus subscribers oh, have been unable go. to access the free next gen update of Fallout Four on PlayStation. This issue has now been successfully resolved. Subscribers who have previously received Fallout Four from the PlayStation Plus collection should now be able to access the update as intended. What a shit show! Yeah, but. I mean, I wanted to put this in there because, like, yes, this is a shit show, but I feel like 
we need to like make it clear or I need to make it clear because I've had experience with this. Uh, this is not Bethesda's fault. This is not Microsoft's fault. This is a Sony problem. This has been a Sony problem. Sony is really bad about differentiating different versions of the game that you already have in one form or another through the PlayStation Network. Yeah. The, the one I keep going back to is Ghost of Tsushima. Because I redeemed a PlayStation Plus multiplayer mode for Ghost of Tsushima, they now think I own a version of Ghost of, of the actual game Ghost of Tsushima, which I don't. Mm -hmm. Which means if I were to try to buy the game now, I don't get the sale price when it goes on sale. I have to pay a full fifty dollars for it instead of you know whatever the discount is. If I I have your copy of the PS4 version, if I put that in, it's not going to give me the standard ten dollar update. I have to pay full price for the update. It's this really weird, like confusing setup that they have. Careful now. I hit the wall. It's this really down. weird and confusing setup they have on the PlayStation Network that like does not play nice with certain games. All because of like the weird way they categorize everything. I, and it screws things up for people who like redeem it through the PlayStation Plus uh, method. I've had that issue before with other, I feel like platforms where I've yeah. received something for free through like, I think it was probably Game Pass. And I was, and I like couldn't do, oh, you know what? Starfield. Yeah. <laughs> Get it through Game Pass and you can't fucking play the mm -hmm. game early. Uh, there's other things uh, that I've redeemed through Game Pass and it screwed up a lot of stuff for, for me. Yeah. Um, so like, I, I understand that, that being an issue. They update, they, they released this next gen update uh for fallout 4 because fallout 4 had like a huge boom in uh in, in player base because everybody was watching the show oh the yeah it's good it's it's insane apparently fallout 76 is like completely revitalized now like people jumped back on and started playing and actually started loving it even though they had like a horrid launch yeah. when it initially came so, out. so uh it looks like the show really did them really good yeah uh, unfortunately, though, apparently this next gen update like ruined some mods. Like people yeah. were working on mods and they didn't know yeah. this was happening, and uh, it kind of like screwed them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but is it really uh, like on Bethesda to tell these mod developers like, "Hey, we're going to release a next gen update"? I mean, maybe they're not, not like, like official, you know? Maybe not like specifically, but like Bethesda has been like very supportive of like the mod community. Yeah. And like, wasn't it Fallout Four that like supported mod on mods on console? It was like one of the yeah. first games to act. Yeah. So like, yeah. I guess it, to some extent, maybe like they shouldn't have to go to every mod maker individually, but like, you know, announce this update well in advance and like lay out certain like ground rules so that people have enough time to like you know make accommodations for it. I ju it's just like you know usually they're really secretive about stuff like this. And yeah. Telling just every mod developer is like seems like a a, a hole in the in the in the secret yeah you know that 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 seems like a i don't know i don't i don't know if they would have been able to let the uh mod developers know about yeah. this or, or 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 let them know early enough where it would even matter mm -hmm. but anyway uh yeah a lot of people playing fallout 4 now yeah and people really good like for it. them that is good i only played fallout 3 and i didn't I got all the way to the end, and I was like, "Why am I playing this? Stop playing." <laughs> I, I like I haven't seen the show yet. I watched the first episode. Yeah, was it good? It was okay. Yeah, it was, that's, I heard it. It just set. It's all set up. Right. So. Yeah. Of course. Um, I am curious to see, like, you know, actually play a Fallout game now because, like, you know, the hype is real. So, I won't, I can, oh, I'm, you took you took Fallout Four. I did take Fallout yeah. Four and Fallout Three. Although apparently, New Vegas is like the best. So everybody likes. New Vegas, but I bet you would probably like four because uh, it's got modern stuff. Yeah. Apparently, you can't run in three or Vegas. Really? Yeah. Like this, you can run and fall off. Yeah. Four. Okay. Yeah. So well, that I might like that more than. Yeah. We should get Dad to play New Vegas. Oh, because Vegas. Yes. He likes Vegas. So I, we would have to play because apparently you don't start in New Vegas. You have to get to New Vegas. So we would have to play up to that point <laughs> for him. Is there even like landmarks in the game? I'd imagine not. I probably I'd imagine like, it's just vaguely casino themed. It probably had to be like approximations. Mm -hmm. Like there's not gonna be like you know 
the Venetian or the Win or the Caesar's Palace or whatnot. Also, yeah, that game was made like 20 years ago. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, uh, Xbox is not doing too hot. No, it is not. Uh, I'll see if I can find the tech giant announced its third quarter earnings that Xbox series X and S revenue is down 30% year over year. It blamed the nosedive on a lower volume of consoles sold during the start of 2024. If that sounds like a repeat of last year, it's because it is the Xbox hardware revenue decreased 30% on a strong prior year comparable driven by a lower volume of consoles sold reported back in April, 2023. In February, uh, Take-Two claimed in a presentation to investors that there were roughly 77 million Gen 9 consoles in people's homes. It didn't take fans long to do the math to speculate that Microsoft had only sold around 25 million Xbox Series X and S consoles to date. That puts it ahead of the GameCube, but behind the N64, at least for now. Given the results of this quarter as well, it doesn't seem like Game Pass and Starfield have moved the needles much. Um, maybe this will change once Call of Duty, which Microsoft acquired last fall, um, finally makes it to Game Pass. Diablo 4 only just arrived on the subscription service, but given the fact the fate of Xbox Series X and S appears to be locked, and at this point, it's it's easy to see why Microsoft is looking at other places uh, it can put its games. Um, yeah, so uh, 25 million Xbox Series X and S's, whereas what's the PlayStation 5 at, like 50? It's a lot. Yeah, it's it's a bit, you know, it's a big, it's a big gap. You know, half might not seem like a much, but like when we're talking about millions of units, like it's a lot. Yeah. It's also important to remember that uh, Microsoft now owns Bethesda. And yes. Fallout. <laughs> so they're benefiting from this boom. They are. I keep seeing like articles and stuff saying like Microsoft is like the most profitable video game company. Dot dot dot. Now that they own Activision Blizzard, yeah. so like all of their revenue is basically coming from Activision Blizzard games now. It makes a lot of sense for them to pivot away from having physical hardware. Mm -hmm. But xbox and microsoft make pretty good physical hardware they do so uh i don't want them to shy away from it completely i don't think they're losing a lot of money by having xbox around it's just uh they ha make more money uh with software but i see i don't know because they'd lose money on every xbox console sold because the mentality, you know, the console men mentality is you lose money on the hardware, you yeah. make up for it on software. No one's buying the hardware, which means no one's buying the software. You know, well, well that's not true. It's they're buying the software on other platforms. Right, but only a handful of games. You know? Yeah, but th that's the ones that's driving all of the money. But imagine, know? like, if they put more of their games on other... Like, if, if Halo and Gears and Fable... They, they will. When they make new ones, those things are... are even halo launched on pc that's pc that's an yeah. that's the agnostic platform yeah and th they they're gonna do that from now but until you, the end of time do you think we're gonna see halo on playstation that's what i'm getting at i'm not sure because, I'm, I'm not sure how much that would even help to be right. completely honest with you i, I think I, it would help a lot i know that that's in terms of console sales playstation 5 is the is the one to put your game right. on but i think that they would just always sell more on pc anyway well I, I can I could definitely see a world where you know you were a 360 bro back in college, but now like you know you haven't played games in a long time, and now you're an adult with kids, and your kids are starting to play video games. You buy a PlayStation Five, and all of a sudden like, oh Halo! I used to play this in college. It's on PS Five now. We should play it. And your kids are like, God, Dad, shut up! I don't <laughs> like I don't love you. I want to play Fortnite. <laughs> so, this is the original Fortnite. Yeah. Also, too, like Game Pass is successful for them, mm -hmm. but by a lot of metrics, Game Pass subscriptions have plateaued. So, like, yeah. they're not getting any new subscribers, but they're not really losing any subscribers. It's like stabilized. And, like, for a company like Microsoft, stabilization isn't great. It has to no, grow. No, but they're the most profitable game company because they own Bethesda and, and Activision, Activision Blizzard. Blizzard. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant. Activision Blizzard. Yeah. Uh, they casted a wide net and they have some of the most popular game franchises right now that launch on all platforms. Right. So it doesn't fucking matter that <laughs> Halo doesn't sell well and it's locked to uh, Xbox and Because and Call of Duty PC. will be on all systems. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 this is the fall of, of the old Microsoft IPs, mm -hmm. but it's not the end of Xbox because they 
are just changing how they're doing things. Right. They're, they're, they're banking on uh, their software more than they are trying to lock people onto their own platform. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not the end of Xbox. We might as well talk about this next um, because they got a showcase coming in June. Oh. June 6th, to be precise. Xbox Game Showcase followed by Redacted. Direct airing. <laughs> oh, June 9th. Sorry. I put the wrong date in the keep. Uh, mark your calendars. Xbox Game Showcase will live stream on June 9th, 2024, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, British Standard Time. Ooh, England. Hello. Um, like Xbox's double feature last year was Starfield Direct. Immediately following the showcase, um, they will be airing a special deep dive into the next installment of a beloved franchise. We can't say much, so for now, we'll, uh, we'll call it the Xbox Showcase Xbox Game Showcase, followed by Redacted Direct. Interesting. It's Call of Duty. It's just Call of Duty. No, they would do a whole showcase for Call of Duty. Why wouldn't they? It's because Call they got to take a year off, man. They fucking were they they shit the bed last Call of Duty launch. There was prob honestly, dude. It's not. I can't be Call of Duty. There, look, they got like a, every Activision owned studio works on Call of Duty. They probably had a Call of Duty game in the chamber already. Yeah, and I want Microsoft to be like pause that. <laughs> Get your shit together first. I think it's got to be a big IP that we haven't heard from in a while. It, it the, could be Indiana Jones. Look at the logo, though. Like, does that look like an Indiana Jones logo to you? I don't see it. Oh. That's the logo? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's Call of Duty. Yeah. Right. You got the capital in the background. What else could it be? I, I need Perfect Dark. Yes. We haven't he heard shit from Perfect Dark. And by all accounts, that's not having a good development like process so like anything on perfect dark would be nice the division three it could be but that's ubisoft yeah like it looks like the division but that's ubisoft yeah so that doesn't make any sense what's there's three wolves what's three wolves uh us if we include our cousin <laughs> the t-shirt with the three wolves in the moon <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know what three wolves would would, yeah. would, would indicate I really hope it's not Call of Duty. That would be really annoying. Yeah. I mean, they, they got to have something it's else. It's a thousand percent going to be Call of Duty. Uh, also, id at Xbox. Recap. ID what's, at Xbox. That's their indie showcase. Apparently, they had one today. I had no idea. Wait, ID yes. at Xbox? ID at Xbox. It's not id. No. These okay. are no. These are not id software. So what is ID then? <sighs> indie? Ind independent developer, yeah. Okay. They, okay. This is, ID at Xbox has been the, the program for indie dev devs over there since the 360. That's what they call it. Um, and they showed off a bunch of games. Um, we don't need to go through. Ast Aster Blade of the Monolith, uh, 33 Immortals closed beta is set for late May. Uh, Power World is getting a massive update with new pals this summer. Uh, Commandos Origins is uh, getting a closed beta this summer. Uh, Centum is an 8-bit point-and-click adventure game coming this summer. Lost Record Bloomin' Rage gets a trailer but no release date. Key Locker is out this summer. Stampede Racing Royale uh, coming this year. Ooh, Jackbox Games is finally making adult-themed party packs. Ooh. Oh, they've always saucy. been adult-themed when we play them. Oh, yes, but now they're getting saucy. Time and Galaxy is getting a June release. Uh, Sulfur is like a temporary shooter with old-school vibes. Uh, Farrah, the... The Sundred Tribes is out later this year. All You Need Is Help uh, is coming. Uh, Tales of Iron 2, Whiskers of Winter gets a trailer, but no release date. Hangry briefly appeared at ID at Xbox. Uh, Promise Mascot Agency uh, was shown off. Five games published by uh, Gamera Games. Um, Depersonalization, Firework, Volcano Princess, uh, Kelp Earth, and The Rewinder. 15 games from the Triple I Initiative. Uh, Dungeons of Hinterberg uh, and Vampire, Subri Vampire Survivors Operation Guns. <laughs> I had no idea that, that happened. Yeah, I, I was completely oblivious. I think that. like the 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 big one out of this is the Jackbox Naughty Edition because <laughs> that's the most popular. Game. Yeah. I hate Jackbox. <laughs> I hate when people break those out. It's so annoying. Because because what I've learned is that not everyone's funny. Yeah. And you are basically forcing people in the room to try to be funny. Yeah. I was, yeah. In fact, most people are not funny at all. It's true. True. We are very funny. We are very funny. We are very good. We're at extremely yes. funny here. Uh, 
farmer in the, in the YouTube chat with five dollars donating to the custom Wolf Laptop Fund, or the whiteboard fund. <laughs> I found this big flip whiteboard for a hundred bucks. We can get one of those. Oh yes. We'd have to get another camera and just <laughs> go to that. All right. Uh, plow through the rest. Tomb Raider 2013 finally updated on PC. Uh, yeah. So the definitive edition of Tomb Raider 2013, it originally came out on the 360 and PS3. Uh, I got an update on the PS4 and Xbox One called the definitive edition. That didn't come to PC, but it's finally come to PC now, 10 years later. But there's a catch. Uh, it is only available on the Microsoft Store. So if you have weird. you if you have it on Steam or if you have it um, on Epic, if it's on the Epic Store, I don't know. Uh, too fucking bad. You have to have it on the Microsoft Store. That's really weird because yeah, that's it's, a it's square surprised. thing. Yeah, and it's weird that they just like shadow dropped it. There was no like announcement for it. I bet that it'll be on everything else eventually. I'm sure, yeah. but like, it's just bizarre. That like, seems like a mistake. They're making a big deal with like Tomb, the Tomb Raider one, two, and three, the remaster collection. They just put it on the Evercade now. Like they're making a big push for like the older Tomb Raider games. This is like probably the best Tomb Raider game, and they're just like. Microsoft's not gonna have it. I think it sounds like a mistake. It sounds like right. th they they put the wrong date in the computer and mm -hmm. it launched on that date and now they're like, oh well, I guess we gotta wait for the other one. Yeah. Our next Kingdom Hearts movie in the works. Y'all cool. Yeah. Uh it wasn't even like a proper announcement. Uh the rumor comes from the Diz uh the Diz Insider, who unfortunately doesn't have uh many salient details they to said, bolster their claims. Well, to get one thing out of the way, Disney is developing an animated Kingdom Hearts movie, said the Din Insider. While years back I heard uh the idea was to do something on Disney Plus, more recently I have heard the goal would be big screen adaptation. But as of now, these are just rumblings. Oh, I got an if. <laughs> it fucking just takes over the screen. Yeah. Um, there's just rumblings. Nothing has been greenlit. Disney may have more on more of an interest on actual gaming instead of developing movies based on video games. Prince of Persia and Need for Speed were both duds for Disney. Uh, so this means nothing. Like it, it, it could get. It hasn't even been greenlit. Yeah, it I don't could, know. I don't know how much I trust a, a redditor. You know, it's the but random. Even if, they, even if they did hear anything, uh, if it's not greenlit, Disney's going to cancel. Yeah, yeah they're, 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 they're not against canceling things. Uh, Bef well, they but, could be well into development. Right. And, you know, and not see the light of day. And but cancel. like a proper movie studio, they will cancel it before it hits actual production. Unlike certain uh, legacy movie studios uh, that feature uh rivals to mickey mouse like bugs bunny <laughs> or rivals to marvel like dc who will have fully finished movies and then the goliath at the top will just be like you know what he's talking about warner bros this is a warner bros i don't thing. like uh, we're just gonna shove this down the toilet next gary's mod we should put this higher gary's we mod faces higher, yeah. uh deluge did I say that right? Yes. Of Nintendo related DMCA takedown notices. I have heard about this. Uh, I really don't think of like a crazy. Thing. People went a little nuts about this. I really don't think it's like that big of a deal. <laughs> well, I think it is because, like, well, first off, they're removing, it's like upwards of 20 years of uploads. So this is a tweet by uh, Brewster Koopa who says false flaggers on the Gary's Mod workshop. Oh, so so it was originally rumored that this was not Nintendo and right. someone else was doing a fake DMCA. Yeah. There is someone or a group of trolls going around the Gmod workshop filing false DMCA claims and shutting down add-ons. Over 10 Gmod add-on makers, myself included, have been attacked with over a dozen of our add-ons gone. Turned out to actually be Nintendo. Yes, because Gary himself... Uh, tweeted, yes, we've gotten your emails and DMs. We have seen your threads. Uh, we are doing our own investigations. We need to take these things seriously, particularly from Nintendo, but also can't let people misuse DMCA takedowns. Um, and then he updated and said, said uh, they're verified uh, by Nintendo as legit. Yeah. So it, I mean, it sucks and I, and I don't like it, but yeah. there was a bunch of stuff on the Steam marketplace that was just straight up like here's mario characters right. that you can put in gmod and mm -hmm. like obviously nintendo's gonna not be cool with that it's literally putting their characters in a game that they're not supposed to be uh -huh. in. so i'm just surprised it's taken this long for them to do that mm -hmm. 
uh, what's what are they gonna do next? Because uh, maybe they're getting a little uh, copyright uh, hungry there. Oh, definitely. They're they've got to be. There's got to be for a reason though. Like, why would they go like scorched earth now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I forgot to pull a tweet of the week. <gasps> is Bob slipping? Would it be? Twitter sucks, it man. Twitter is getting worse and it, worse. It like really does. Oh, I had a good TikTok. Hold on. <laughs> Vamp. <laughs> oh, I got a good tweet of the week. All right, put it in thing. All right. I had a great. <laughs> this is, I mean, it, it might only be, it, it might just be a Will specific tweet of the week, but like, I think it's funny. Okay. By the Tumboy. Okay. And it says, okay, what kind of ape are you? I get it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's party funny. apes, but also the Civil War. The Civil yeah. War movie. It's, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I got a good kick out of it. I understand. I, I, am, I am excited for Civil War to come to streaming. I really want to see that movie. I might actually go to the movies to see Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, honestly. Because, like, I keep hearing about how great Planet of the Apes Do you want are. my Blu rays of the recent no. trilogy? No. Nope. Because, like, look. Like, I don't know how often I have to say this, but the recent Planet of the Apes trilogy, Rise, Dawn, and War, are fucking incredible. I, I heard. Genuinely I fucking heard they're incredible. Very good. Have you seen Civil War? Is that good? No, but I've heard it is very good. I will be, I will be anxiously waiting for that. They when it shot comes. the whole movie on, Ron, on DJI, like, Ronin cameras. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, and then Gutter is a tool, says Civil War was garbage. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What's the Rotten Tomatoes in Civil War? I think it's high. I've heard mixed things. Though. Yeah. I, it's one of those things where, like, you bring your own biases 81%. to it. Yeah. That's pretty good. All right. Now we're going to talk to you guys. Yes. Starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com. Slash Wolf Den Podcast. Oh, God. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> Jesus. We got Charlie Fenn over on last week's Wolf Den Podcast. If he hasn't already, I need a campaign for Bob to play Espresso Tycoon. I've never heard of this game. <laughs> oh, it okay. is just stupidly in-depth for how much effort you can put into your coffees. What beans, milk, syrups, etc. Although, why do I imagine Bob would not care about making the customers happy you can put awful things in coffees too I oh there's a demo oh i will absolutely play a demo have you played coffee talk no everybody tells me play it i don't know if you would like it because it's mostly I just know like i wouldn't like it. it's mostly just like a i don't want to say a talk simulator but like it's it's a it's like a choose your own dialogue game why is that intersperses with like you know making a latte why is espresso tycoon a zombie game why not? <laughs> so this looks terrible. <laughs> yeah, coffee talk doesn't look good either. Well, it doesn't look like my kind of game. No. And people just want me to play it because it's got coffee. Yeah. Oh, you can get a bundle with a uh, espresso tycoon and thief simulator. You might like thief sim. No, you're not gonna like thief simulator. T Tiller says, "Hey, Will, how do you feel about Scott Snyder purse?" potentially being the mastermind behind DC's potential Ultimate Comics style relaunch. I love his Batman, but find his approach to the wider DC universe to be a bit too over the top. Uh, his he did a good job with New 52. Well, just he just basically worked on Batman and Swamp Thing during mm -hmm. New 52. Yeah. He did a Justice League run during the Rebirth era, which you are correct, that was wild and out there. Um, but I think that was the point. I think this new comic line, it hasn't like officially been announced yet, but it's been rumored to be called Absolute DC. That's like basically their, you're familiar with the, Mar the Ultimate Marvel line, yeah. right? It's like a back to basics, re modern reimagining of the Marvel characters. DC has tried to do their own version of the Ultimates like three times. There was All-Star Batman and Robin and All-Star Superman, the All-Star line. There was the Earth One line, uh, which had, which, did a lot more than All Star did, and actually had a lot of really good stuff. But now this is like attempt number three. So like they keep trying to make like an ultimate DC happen 
but like they can never like just make it stick. So I don't know if this is going to be it. We'll see. It just history has shown me that like whenever DC tries to do an ultimate version, it just never works. It, it, it'll work like here and there, but like not in the long run. What I'm trying to say. Speaking of DC, oh yes, why don't you open your package? Yes. Also, uh, Jeff T. Magic from last week says tweet of the week is incredible, and I'm realizing we robbed people of tweet of the week, tweet of the week, tweet of the week. We didn't do that this week. We we robbed you guys of the of the of the song. Yeah, sorry about that. So what's that box you got there? So this box I got here is from um, frequent viewer of the show, and. Illustrator of Superman 76, The Metal Curtain, Gavin Guidry, uh, actual DC Comics artist, uh, sent us a little care package of comics that he's worked on. Also, I got his artwork. Yes. He also did artwork for um, the Predator vs. Wolverine over at Marvel. I, I bought it at Comic-Con. Yeah. I was at Comic-Con. Good dude. Great dude. Good dude. Great Genuinely, dude. Genuinely, like, excellent artist. We'll see. Let's see here. Thank we... God, the box was a little yeah. fucked up, so I was a little worried that they did a bad what job. We got, we got uh, Titans Beast World Tour. Uh, this was uh, the Beast the Beast World crossover event where everybody got Beast Boy powers. Okay, so that was that's fun. I haven't read that yet. Uh, Twas the Might Before Christmas. This was their Christmas anthology. Uh, I have the first issue. I didn't read it yet, but now this. I think this is the. Or am I thinking of something else? I am thinking of something else. Never mind. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, this this is his creator own book, which I got from oh, him at Comic Con. So oh, that's yours. Uh, and this is the one I'm excited for. This is a uh, DC is a Spring Breakout uh, because this I believe has a Titan story that he illustrated. First page is a dude with his with, with, with his, his briefs. There you go. And a crosshair on his on his cock. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the Teen Titans in Relay for Your Life, uh, written by Megan uh, Fitzmartin and illustrated by Gavin Guidry, also features stories by Joey Esposito, uh, Mike W. Barr, uh, Morgan Hampton, artwork by Vasco Georgiev, um, Wes St. Clair, uh, Scott Collins, uh, and a whole host of others. He signed these. Yes, he did. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Gavin, Thank you, Gavin. Thank you so much. If uh, if you are also an internationally known comic book illustrator and you want to send us <laughs> stuff, uh, be my guest. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gavin. Uh, so back to the comments from last week's Wolf yes. Podcast. We got this Benners who says, great co- podcast. Thank you, Wolf Bros, for a great conversation. We got to talk about launch titles we're looking forward to for the next Nintendo console. Which games are you excited for? Their first year and which excites you the most? I just think they're going to launch it with a Mario game. Do you, do you think there is a possibility that Prime 4, Metroid Prime 4, will be a launch title? No. Uh, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I, I think that Metroid is one of their least uh, successful franchises. That's not to say that it's not great right. and that it doesn't do decently it's just all of their other franchises do, do exponentially better right so it would not be a good launch title for them do you well here's a here's my counter argument to that dread sold very well yeah. it exceeded expectations for a metroid game yes yeah but i think you know people who play dread seeing that a new switch is launching with a metroid game on top of the fact that people who have or buying the system need a game metroids right there they've heard good things about previous metroid games yeah there just weren't that many people that bought dread like it did really good for, for a dread. metroid game yeah, yeah it didn't do really good for a nintendo game like overall but i think it's possible that if prime 4 is a launch title it could be the best selling metroid game because people are going to want a new game for their new system, yeah, it, and that will definitely be a showcase game for the system. It would be the best-selling Metroid game, right? Which is still not saying enough. <laughs> like Breath of the Wild was insane. The right. amount and that, that was that sold. basically a one-to-one attach yeah. rate. Yeah, it has to be Zelda or Mario, right? And it's not going to be Zelda, mm-hmm. so it has to be Mario. Okay. Or they could do what they did on the GameCube and just have fucking nothing, right? <laughs> for the for the first. Uh, 
couple months. Could they out. launch it with Mario Kart Nine? Yes, because that would also be yes. Yeah, they could do that. I don't think they would do that though. Uh, I I just think it's gonna be a new Mario game. Mm-hmm. It could be an Odyssey too. I don't know if they'd want to launch it with a number though. Right. You know, with a number on the thing. Like even Metroid Prime Four, that might just be Metroid Prime something. Yeah. Well, no, they called it. They called they it called the it trailer. Four, yeah. yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think it's gonna be a Mario game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cosmic Illustrator says forest for the trees here, but rec- record set record stores are definitely still a thing. I do live in a city, so results may vary, but there are six I personally go to, and then some. Heck, Target's vinyl section is growing. If anything, Taylor Swift, I saw her on TikTok, uh, promoting her vinyl at Target. Yes, I went to, every time I go to Target. There's just a big display case of the Tortured Poet Society. And like, meanwhile, you go to the video game section and it's like a ghost town. I've been to record stores. I know that yeah, they I've, exist. Yeah, I've also been to record stores. But I also don't think just because they exist I mean that they're successful in any way. Like, I, I think that there, uh, there's two types of record stores, okay? Right. There's the old guys mm-hmm. who just have a huge collection and they like buying them and selling them and right. stuff. And they're not, you know, necessarily like making money. They're just, mm-hmm. they just really enjoy it. And then there's young people with daddy's money right? who think that they're going to make a business <laughs> and they just, they're not profitable at all. They just like to hang out. But I feel like it's got to be profitable enough because like, not for that, not for the second people that I laid out. <laughs> it doesn't have to be profitable for them. They just need to be busy so that they could justify. Well, the thing is money. like there are, I feel like, you're more likely to find a used record store than you are like a used video game store, even a used like DVD store. And you I don't know, know about video game store. I don't know about, I mean, I, I well have, here on Long Island, I'm in a different, yeah, I'm looking for video games. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But like in the rest of the country, I feel I'm like, thinking like the city. Like yeah. I, I know a ton of right. video game stores, but I'm also looking for video but game stores. I'm I thinking only know of like, of like one or two record stores. I'm thinking like outside of like the New York metropolitan area. Right. Like you go like you know South Carolina, or better Nashville. Nashville's got. I was in New Hampshire and I there was I was in a record store. Yeah, Nashville's got record stores every other block. I have never seen a video game store like the few times I've been to Nashville. But that's Nashville. Right. They should have music stores. Right. But you would think they would have at least one used video game store. The thing, what I'm trying to say is like even record labels still put out vinyl. They're still supporting vinyl. Nobody's supporting cartridge games anymore. Yeah. You know, except for like really niche markets that you can buy online. Did we talk about it on the show how uh, people, I think it was Billie Eilish was, was talking about how like uh, people abuse uh, vinyl releases now yes. by releasing them in different colors yeah uh, because that people buy all of the colors and yeah. that inflates their record sales uh jack white of the white stripes owns a vinyl printing factory and for years he was like one of three factories in the united states that printed vinyl and then when like the major labels of uh, wanted to get into the vinyl game they just went to like Jack White's factory and the two other ones. Yeah. And now they're so flooded with orders that, you know, Taylor Swift has to come first. Beyonce has to come first. Uh, BTS has to come first. Uh, my indie record label, my indie record that I'm putting out one day, don't you worry, <laughs> has gotten pushed to the bottom of yeah. the barrel. Like that's the effect on it. And like these factories can't keep up with demand. So... And like they're and the problem is like the majors are not funding the building of newer factories to yeah. offset this. It's it's still a niche thing. There's 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 a weird in between where they need there's too there's a there's a lot of demand, but there's also not enough demand. It, it's a weird niche niche because like the demand must be high enough for like them to still keep putting out vinyl records in Target, a store that is gradually getting rid of their DVDs yeah. and video games. Meanwhile, like, yeah, most people would just want to go, like, Alexa, play Megadeth Symphony of Destruction. <laughs> I hope that worked. 
there's a similar thing with Polaroid. Like, yes. uh, you know, the, the, there are people now who are making the film, but, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it, it costs more now because there's less demand for it. Yeah. But at the same time, it's getting more popular again. Yeah. So. All right, we'll take a couple chat questions. Yeah. Then we got to get the fuck out Vinyls are fun until you have to move. That's like every collection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gavin's in the YouTube chat. Hello, Gavin. Oh, hey, Gavin. Thank you for your generosity. Generosity. (laughs) We have Uh, a dope game store here in South Carolina called Video Game Cavern, and they sell a lot of older physical stuff, and it's sick. I like a good video uh, used video game store, but um, unfortunately, uh, almost everyone I've been to is insanely expensive. I mean, really, in the city, they're like nuts. Yeah. Uh. Bob, you never read my subscription messages, and I'm sad. You didn't. You didn't say anything. You, <laughs> we read it earlier. George McFarlane with a subscription. It doesn't say. There's no message. Let's try again. Uh, and Gavin Gidry in the Twitch chat. Comics are also fun until you have to move. That I have a lot of experience with. Let yeah. me tell you. I I have a friend, Mike. Yes. Who's talking about his? Uh, he's got. A collection of movie posters. Oh. That's something. Yeah. Because those have to be stored flat. Yeah. And he used to work in a movie theater. Yeah. So he used to just he used to just take posters. Right. <laughs> but uh some of them are worth a fuck ton of money all yeah. of a sudden. Uh Stephanie, are you Will are you going to free comic with Day this year? Yes. I am taking when is that? Saturday. This Saturday? This Saturday. Oh boy. I am Playing with fire, and I'm taking my daughter with me. Oh, boy. Which, well, don't say it. Yeah. That, gonna... I've, got, I've got questions for you later. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go to a store that's got some room. See, my local comic shop, the one I've been going to, is about the size of this room. It just needs wide. Yeah. Wide, you know. I don't, I mean, I don't think it's going to be mobbed. Yeah. But, like. Every comic book store I know of around here is, uh. You can't lift your arms in the, in the in the aisles. Yeah, the one I used to go to, like out west, a little bit, like was pretty big. But like, I don't want to travel like twenty minutes to get my books. Apparently, you made the Alexa start playing Megadeth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, have you ever read Berserker? We have them. Somebody sent them to. Oh, was it Fred? Somebody sent. Fred us- sent me One Piece. We we. All, he's somebody sent us a bunch of manga for some reason. Okay, I, I read exactly zero of the manga. I don't manga remember. I don't remember getting Berserker. I have it somewhere. Okay. We definitely have it. Mm-hmm. Um, so the answer to that is no. And also, Bob, do you know how to change the block but aspect ratio in Open EMU for Mac? Should I, just be in the preferences. What aspect ratio do you want it to be? Because it's just. Four by three for me, yeah. or or it might be pixel perfect. I had a pixel perfect phase for a long time. I like the pixel perfect. Yeah, but, uh, that's not good. You want it to be stretched a little bit to four yeah. by three. Uh, I'm opening Open EMU right now to see. Yeah, I think mine's pixel perfect. Display mode. No. No, that just you gives you like a shader. That looks cool. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, I got shows on the screen. It's like a freaking CRT. What? Look at that. Ooh, that, that that's actually cool. a nice filter. How cool that is. That's uh display modes. Uh, Sony CX A two zero two five AS. Give that a give that a there shot. There you go. Wow. Okay. Uh, is it a shader? No. Oh, yeah. sh- shader CRT geom. Uh, okay. There's a lot of options. Uh, I don't know exactly. Oh, overscan? No. Now I'm just. I f- I fucked with things a little too much. I don't know. I have no idea how to answer. <laughs> and f- uh, hopefully you're not trying to make it uh, 16 by nine. 
Uh, said Fred sent one piece of what? I the, want an eight by seven for SNES. Oh, you want Pixel Perfect? I don't know. Is that what Pixel Perfect is? Eight by seven? I think. Otherwise, why would you want that? Yeah. <laughs> Not really a game question, but opinion on movie Interstellar. It's my fave. I like I've it a lot. I've never seen it, actually. Really? Yeah. I saw it in theaters and it was really good. I didn't see it. Oh, I want to see it. I no, mean, I... towards the end, it does the Christopher Nolan weird. Right. It gets really weird, but it was good. I yeah. liked it. I do genuinely want to see Tenet. I still haven't seen it. I, yet. I also have not yeah. seen it. I own, I own it. I have it on Blu-ray. So. I got it on Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Uh, no bananas. Who says there's making a Nintendo Switch too? Thank you for the Prime. Uh, that's somebody who's you want to talk about record stores. Yeah, talk to that guy. Okay. Bob, my spe- any special stream plans this week? Um, would you do another Mario speed run again for Odyssey? Maybe. I I kind of miss Odyssey. Um, I think I'm getting that new Ambernick R8XX tomorrow. And I'm getting them. And I have the MiU Mini already. Uh, and I want to do a video on both. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably fuck around with those on a stream one day this week. I don't know if I'm going to stream on Thursday, though. Um, I'm all fucked up this week. Also, my video this week is probably going to be pushed back to Sunday. Because... Uh, I'm testing input lag on all of the handheld that I have. Ooh. And uh, it's a huge pain in the ass to do that. You can't just like push the button and like record it in slow mo. You can. <laughs> but I got a t- I got a thing that's supposed to do it automatically. Ooh. But then I have to use that thing on seven different devices. Right. Oh god. Um Thoughts on the Aya Neo Pocket S. I haven't even looked at it. It looks real. <laughs> the, uh, so I've seen it and it looks cool, but I haven't seen any reviews or anything and I don't have one personally. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I don't, I have no idea. Looks cool. All right. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden or youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version. Over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. Because we're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us. Because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I don't know when I'm going to uh, be streaming next. I don't know if I can Thursday. Uh... I didn't stream Sunday. I was outside in the sun for like two hours. Ooh. And then I came home and had a headache and took a nap. I <laughs> mowed the lawn on Sunday, got myself a redneck, like my knees hurt, and I, I wanted to die. We're not built for, We're not. for being no. outside. No. Is the thing. Yeah, turns out. Uh... I don't fucking know. Who do we <laughs> raid here? Uh, ooh, wait. Nintendo Stan is playing Sonic. Ooh. Sonic Adventure. Hell yeah. Watch him. Uh, I'll, I don't know what I'm going to be on. Uh, goodbye, though. Bye.